several years back, um, I was sitting there watching TV one day, and uh, this was a period of time where I, I've always loved uh, athletics and sports and fitness, and uh, I've always loved going to the gym. But I just went through a season where, you know how one thing leads to another? It's like, first of all, you're sick. And then after you get over your sickness, you're just not feeling it or you're too tired. And uh, one decision led to many decisions, which eventually led me to that fateful night when I was sitting there watching TV and my wife came by me and I didn't even realize what I was doing, but she noticed, she looked at me and I had a glass as I was sitting down perched on my stomach. And uh, she said, that makes a nice shelf. I never thought about that before. Now, she was just joking, but all of a sudden, it was like this flashing light on the dashboard of my physical fitness life just went off, and it said, danger. And I thought to myself, how in the world did I get here? And the answer, one decision at a time. Now, I don't know how it is for you in, in this season, but one of the things about quarantine that I think has been uh, quite revealing is that you get to spend a lot of time with you, right? You don't get to go out with your friends or uh, go play golf or go to work or somehow escape somewhere else. You just get to spend a lot of time with you. And if you happen to be with roommates or family members, you're all in close quarters. And so some of the junk in your life is just gonna come out. And maybe that has been the case for you. I know it's been the case for me. And uh, in the middle of all that, um, I think this message today holds a great deal of relevance in this moment because as we begin to slowly emerge out of some of the quarantine, I think most of us can identify maybe some troubling paths by which we are on right now. Maybe it's a a self-control issue. Maybe it's an anger issue. Maybe it's a financial issue. I don't know what it might be for you, but I think this one verse that comes out of the book of Proverbs, I have in my Bible highlighted, exclamation point, star, 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 underlined, rectangle around it, you name it, because I think this is one of the most important words of wisdom in the whole book of Proverbs. And we're on this series dealing with what does it mean to have peace in the chaos? And we said what it means to have peace in the chaos is that we realize that that God has a design for life. And when we align our lives with his design, then life doesn't have to be put on survival mode. Life can be a life of thriving, a life of deepening of relationships with God and with others, a life where we can actually experience peace even in the midst of the chaos. And so, and another thing about this principle, this works whether you are a believer or not. You can be rich, you can be poor, you can be educated, uneducated, you come from a great family, you can come from a terrible family. Um, no matter what, who you are, this principle is at work in your life right now. And so, here it is. Um, Proverbs 22, verse three. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Now, a few things you need to know just about this whole book of Proverbs and and, uh, this whole series is that uh, the writer is, is a, for most of it, is a guy by the name of Solomon who is considered one of the wisest people to ever live because as we learned last week, when he was given the chance to, to have anything he wanted from God, he chose wisdom. He chose wisdom. And so um, a few things that, that are referred to throughout the book of Proverbs is, first of all, um, a lot of it talks about the wise person and the foolish person or the prudent person, in this case, and the naive person. The wise person um, is referred to uh, as a Hebrew word, 
Ahrum, Ahrum. And it's a person who acknowledges and lives by the reality that God has a design for life. Sounds familiar. And, and when we align our lives with God's design, then we can experience freedom and we can experience hope. Um, another word that, that is used to refer to a person who is wise in the book of Proverbs is this phrase. They have the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. Now, I know that a lot of times when you hear fear of the Lord, um, it's been put in some kind of crazy context, like you're running away from some God who wants to hurt you or is bad. That is not what fear of the Lord means. Fear of the Lord means an awe and a reverence for who God is. It's a posturing of your life that says, God, you know better than I do. If I take over the controls of my life and do it all on my own, I am going to be broken against the design that, that you have created for me. So I wanna surrender my life to your way instead of mine. The foolish person in the Bible is someone, and this is the Hebrew word, pathi, pathi, which means to refuse to align your life with God's design, to do life on your own terms. Now, when you look at the New Testament, Jesus also had some words to say about the wise and the foolish. When Jesus talked about it, he referred to the fact that um, everyone in life faces storms. And he said that some people build their house before the storm on a solid foundation. That's the wise person. And the foolish person builds their house on sand. And when the storm comes, the house falls. And I love this because when Jesus talked about the wise and the foolish, Jesus said the wise person is the one who hears his word and, and puts it into practice. In other words, you can know God's truth. You can believe in God's truth with everything in you. But if you don't put it into practice, it's like building your house on the sand. And when the storms come, great is the fall. The person who builds their house on the sand is the one who hears the word but does not apply it. So a huge key to wise living is application. It's application. You see, because God's ultimate intent is not to watch you crash and burn your life. I know sometimes that we can get into some terrible places in life and we find ourselves oftentimes saying, why God, why, why me? And while there are some times in life that are very mysterious and we might not ever know until we get on the other side of eternity, the truth is a lot of situations that we come to in life, if we're really honest, we got there one decision at a time. You see, God's design is that we would live with freedom, with a deepening of relationships between you and God and, and between um, me and, 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 one, and one another, that's God's intent. And so God's wisdom is not intended to harm, but to help. So why don't we let God help us? So a few observations from this passage today. Uh, first of all, everyone finds themselves at some point on a path toward danger. It's a part of life. You see, it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from or what your past is like or what your present is like. All of us can easily find ourselves on a road towards a dangerous outcome. And the reason is, is, is because you and I, we, we haven't ever done this before, right? You are living a life one day at a time, but you've never seen today, right? How many of us have ever lived through a pandemic before this day or before this time, right? We're experiencing something for the very first time. Well, life is a lot like that. 
Now, some of us will glean wisdom from the people that are ahead of us, that have already marched on ahead of us, and they've learned some things the hard way. Have you ever heard someone say that the best experience, the best experiences in life, and the best learning of life comes when you learn from the bad experiences that others had instead of you having to go through those bad experiences? So some of the things we can learn just by gleaning it from the people around us who have gone before us. But the truth is we're all living this thing. We only get one life. And so we, we get to live this moment and, and we're just trying to figure it out, right? We're trying to, you know, and you probably felt like that during this whole quarantine thing. It's like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just trying to do the best I can. See, most of us don't get the opportunity that Bill Murray had. Uh, you've heard us refer to the, the movie when we talked about the quarantine a few weeks ago. Uh, there's this uh, movie in which Bill Murray called Groundhog Day plays this reporter and uh, Bill Murray basically finds himself caught in a time warp. And he begins to live the same day over and over and over again. And every single day he wakes up to the same thing. People say the same thing. And all of a sudden he's about to lose his mind until one day he realizes that he can alter the course of that day by the decisions he makes. But you see, we don't get that opportunity. We don't get to live the same day like, God, I totally screwed this day up. Let's just do a rewind. I'm gonna try this again. We don't get that. And so you're doing the best you can with these days, but all of us can find ourselves, if we're not paying attention, we can find ourselves on a path towards danger because it's a part of living in a broken world. It's a part of living in a fractured existence with, with sin and brokenness and hurt and pain. And so all of us can find ourselves there. But the difference between the wise and the foolish is not that we find ourselves on a dangerous path. It's how we respond when we realize we're on a dangerous path. So here's the second observation. The wise person knows that their choices today impact what they experience tomorrow. In other words, they realize there's a connection between the decisions I'm making right now and where I'm headed. The book of Proverbs says that you put yourself on a path. The wise person avoids a painful future by altering their decisions today. You see trouble ahead. And a lot of us do see it in advance, right? We see some things that are emerging in our lives that might be troubling patterns for which we can um, begin to make some different kinds of decisions to lead towards a different outcome. And so the wise person gets that. There's a connection between my choices today and where I'm headed. And so a wise person does things like when they're in financial struggle, when they've lived beyond their means and they've built huge amounts of consumer debt, a wise person cuts up credit cards and begins to put themselves on a budget and live within their means and practices such healthy things like saving. That's what a wise person does. A wise person has an awkward conversation with someone for whom they're out of sorts with and they realize this relationship matters. And if I don't get beyond what's going on between us, then it may not fare well for us down the road. So the wise person is willing to have the awkward and difficult conversations. A wise person realizes they're struggling with, with, a, with a mental health issue. And they come to the place of deciding to go to counseling. The wise person is a person who, who realized there's a troubling addiction emerging in my life. And so I'm going to go to celebrate recovery or to AA. As difficult as it might be, as embarrassing as it might be to acknowledge I have a problem, it's way better to make a decision today than to wait and just see how it goes down the road. The wise person breaks up with a person who is no good in your life, the person who constantly is, has a destructive patterns of behavior that... that um, always are leading you down the wrong roads and leading you to places that will never take you to where you know God has called you to go. 
Sometimes it requires a breakup in order to be set free. Sometimes it means to get security filters on your devices. Sometimes it means to start exercising. Sometimes it means to eat healthy. Sometimes it means stop smoking, change jobs, make a course correction now to avoid something painful later. That's the wise person. Now, the naive person lives as if what they choose today will not impact what they experience tomorrow. So the foolish person ignores the warning signs. It's kind of like if you're driving down the road and the, the temperature gauge on your car begins to flash, you shouldn't throw a cloth over it and keep driving. The truth is, the foolish person begins to see some emerging signs of danger, but chooses to do nothing. They fail to make a course correction, to which we all must ask the question, why? Why do perfectly intelligent people like you and like me come to places in our lives of regret Losing maybe sometimes whole seasons of our lives, being in bondage and and struggling through something. Why do we make those kinds of decisions when we saw the danger coming? I think there are two or three phrases that sometimes foolish people use to begin to pretend that nothing in their path is, is, is gonna be a problem. Here's one thing. Everyone else is doing it. Everyone else is doing it. Have you heard that before? Right? I mean, my mom and dad used to always tell me, well, just because everyone else is doing it doesn't mean that it's right. And uh, maybe you found yourself saying that before, right? You run around with a group of people who um, every time you get together and alcohol is involved, it leads to everyone drinking far more than they should. Or maybe um, for you, it's, it, it's uh, you run around with a crew of people that always live beyond their means. They, they make a certain amount, but they live as if they make more and they are all upside down in their finances. But, but the lunacy of it is just because everyone else is doing it doesn't mean it's gonna lead you to a good place. And so a lot of people that are living with regrets today are are people that that found themselves saying it. Everyone else is doing it. It, It's probably not gonna be a big deal. You can, everyone else is doing it yourself into a very dangerous place. Here's another thing that uh, wise people or, or smart people say who wind up living with regret. It will never happen to me. Have you ever said that to yourself? It will never happen to me. You've seen the signs ahead that, that things, that something is emerging out of your life that you know needs to be addressed. It's not gonna take you to a great place. And uh, you find yourself saying, that could never happen to me, right? Everyone knows that guy, that guy that lost his job, got fired, that guy that screwed up his marriage, that guy that went bankrupt and lost his home. No one wants to be that guy. But we oftentimes fool ourselves into believing that it can't happen to us. And the truth is, it happens to good people like you and me every single day. And so one of the worst places we could put ourselves into is to somehow begin to pretend and act like it'll never happen to us. People that live with regret every day found themselves saying the very same thing until it happened to them. Another thing that people say is, I've got this. I've got this. Right, the guy that eventually finds himself a full-fledged alcoholic. The person that wound up in a very destructive relationship outside of marriage. The person that wound up being upside down in their finances and buried in debt. 
People who told themselves over and over again, I've got this. I don't need help. One of the most prideful things we can ever say is, I've got this. Because most of the difficult challenges that we faced in life, we faced because we found God's help and we found the help of others, that we can't do it alone. But a lot of people live with regret because they say, I've got this. Another thing that people say that live with regret, what would people think? Right, what would people think if uh, all these people I hang out with, if, if I say, I got a two drink maximum whenever we get together, they'll think, man, you don't wanna hang out with us anymore or uh, what's wrong with you? Why, why don't you just enjoy yourself? Uh, or, or maybe it's, you put yourself on a budget and then you go out with your friends who are spending money like it grows on trees and you say, no, I, 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 I'm not gonna spend that. And you'll say, what, are you have money problems? Right, because it's not always easy to make a difficult choice now to save yourself from a whole lot of heartache later. And so a lot of people just say, what would other people think? And then they wind up on the same dangerous path. You see, a lot of times we put our own future or or other people's thoughts about us over our own future and our well-being. What would people think? So, seeing danger and not making correction, a course correction, will eventually take you to a place that you don't want to go. So here's my question for all of us today. And, and, and I know this is going to be a challenge, but I believe God wants to save you and me from a very dangerous destination tomorrow by making a course correction today. What is one step that you can take? One choice that you can make today that will give you a better, with God's help, a better tomorrow. Here's what it might look like for some of us. For some of us, it might be a financial decision. Uh, I know there was, there's some of you, when we took Financial Peace University as a church last fall, many of you went kicking and screaming into this because who wants to deal with money issues? And, and yet, I can't tell you the number of people that I've talked to since this whole pandemic situation who said, I am so very thankful that back in the fall, we put ourselves on a budget and we saved up an emergency fund. And guys, I can't think of a bigger need for an emergency fund than a pandemic where you might wind up losing your job or getting a pay cut. And so maybe for you, it's a financial decision. Maybe it means getting on a budget. Maybe it means saving. Maybe it means cutting up some credit cards. I don't know what it might mean for you. And another area for some of us might be our marriages. Maybe you've learned as you've gone through this season of quarantine just how hateful you are to your spouse. Maybe you've, you've realized that every time we start to have a conversation, it goes negative quick and we don't believe the best in each other. Or maybe you've realized, I use words that are just so disrespectful of the person that I love the most in life. And so maybe for you today, the decision is, a decision today for the sake of your marriage so that one day, When you're old and gray, you're sitting on the back porch, holding hands, enjoying life together because you made a decision early on to change some destructive patterns to get a different kind of future. Maybe for some of you, the decision is about your children. I've seen a lot of tired parents through this whole season of quarantine. I mean, you're trying to be parents, you're trying to be educator, and and the struggle's real. I mean, I got next door neighbors, have two small children, and I can just see the struggle on their faces, and they're doing a fantastic job. 
But the truth is, it just gets tiring. And, but, but, but in the midst of all of that, some of you, this has been an eye-opening moment because you, you travel a lot, you escape a lot to work, and now you can't. And maybe you've come to realize the gap, the emotional gap there is between you and your children. And you've come into this season where it's like, man, I am learning some things about my kids. I am appreciating some things about being a parent that, that I never have. And, and maybe for you, it's a decision that when you go back to the workplace, you don't just leave your children behind. One of the most important decisions I ever made was at a time where I was struggling as a pastor, the, the church had become like my mistress, and I was there all the time. And I had young kids in my house. And I remember going on vacation one time and seeing an, an older man with, with obviously a college age daughter, and they're downstairs of a lobby doing quiet time together and laughing and cutting up and having a great time. And I realized that I was on a dangerous road, that I would not have that future with my children going the way I was going. And so I made the decision. I would go back and make some changes with the number of nights that I would be out for my job and the way in which I'd structure and schedule family time, not just work time. And today I, I can enjoy some of the fruits of that because of difficult decisions I made years ago. And maybe that's where you are with your children. Maybe for you it's a job issue. Now, I know it's terrible to even think about, do I really need to stay in this job at a time when so many people don't have a job and would love to have a difficult job even to report to? But the truth is, some of you are in a place where you leave your integrity at the door every day in your work. And you know it's not gonna take you to a good place. Or you're working in an environment that is toxic. And you may need to really consider leaving that. I would never tell you to jump one ship until you got another ship to jump to. But for some of you, that might be where you are right now. And, and, and a change of a job could mean everything about the kind of future you're headed towards. Maybe for some of you, it's your friendship network. There's just some people you hang out with that um, maybe don't have the same values. They uh, maybe... Every time you hang out with them, you get into some real trouble. Or maybe you just, you're just fast forwarding the picture of what life will look like if you continue to hang out with these people 10, 15 years down the road and you don't like what you see. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says the kinds of people you surround yourself with and you do life with will impact the direction of your life. And so maybe for some of us, we need we need some new friends or we need some different friends. Maybe for some of you, the issue is self-control. It might be food, you know, unhealthy kind of choices you're making now. It might be drink. It might be your thought life. It might be your fitness. But you might need to make a choice today that'll help give you a better tomorrow. I always love to tell this story because I want to keep reminding people about the choices that we make that can lead to a different destination. Uh, my father grew up in the country. They ate fried food all the time. That was just what you ate, right? And so, you know, he, he went into adulthood and continued to make a lot of um, poor choices with regard to his, his, me, his food. Um, he came from a, a family with rampant heart disease and uh, he would work himself to death, but he'd never really invest in fitness to take care of his, his body. And he, he chose to smoke most of his life. And when it got down um, many, many years later, fast forward, um, he uh, quit smoking, which we all rejoiced over. And then one day he had a rough day on the job and he went back to smoking and we all got on to him. And he just kind of joked about it and he said, you know what, everyone's gonna die of something. I might as well die enjoying myself. And the truth was, 
he passed away far too soon. And there are a lot of days that I grieve that someone that meant so much in my life didn't have the chance to be with his grandkids and his great-grandkids. And while we don't always have a call on when our last day is, we can make some choices today that better our chances for a better tomorrow. And so I don't know what it might be for you, but I think all of us, if we could just take one step, one choice, that one choice with God's help might just change your tomorrow. Now, I'd be remiss if I left it at that because there might be some of you that are on the most dangerous road of all. And that's a road without Jesus in your life. You know, you're always gonna make, you're always gonna make, I mean, this life is gonna be a journey of making choices. Some of them are gonna be good, some of them are gonna be bad. But there's only one choice that we make that ultimately impacts our eternity. There's only one choice that ultimately impacts living with the assurance that I stand before God fully reconciled in a relationship with Him. There's only one choice that gives me an anchor of hope in the midst of any of life's storms. There's only one choice that gives us a firm and sturdy anchor. And that is the choice to place your life in the hands of Jesus. Christians are not Christians because they're good people and they always make all the right choices. Christians are Christians because they have surrendered the ultimate waving of the white flag in their lives, saying, I need help and I can only do it with your help, Jesus. And maybe you've never made that decision. I wanna give you that opportunity to make the most important decision that affects all of your tomorrows and your eternity. And I wanna pray for all of us as well. So let's take just a moment to pray. And if that's you, um, just simply make these words that I pray, uh, your words as you cry out to God. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for pursuing me even when I have chosen to live life on my own terms. Today, I wanna make the one most important decision that impacts all of my tomorrows and my eternity. Today, I wanna place my trust in you. I acknowledge my brokenness and the junk in my life. And God, I've tried to fix myself and it's impossible. So today I say to Jesus as the Lord and Savior of my life, I need help. Come and do in my heart and life what only you can do by the power of the cross, by the power of the resurrection. I want a different life. I want a new beginning. I place my trust in you. And for those of you today that maybe you've already done so, for that one area that God brought to mind today as you've been hearing this message, your choice today with God's help can change your future. And so whatever that choice is that you need to make today, I am praying today for God to give you the strength and the courage and the hope to believe that tomorrow can be a much better day than today by the choice that you're making in this moment. May God be your strength through the awkward conversations, through the difficult decisions that you might need to make. He's gonna bring you out on the other side to a place of freedom, to a place of hope. May it be so for each and every one of us. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Now, let me just say this before uh, we finish. I want to encourage you. If you made a choice to follow Jesus today, place your trust in him. I want to encourage you to go there to the chat space online and uh, let someone know uh, we've got a free gift for you as you begin that new journey of faith. And uh, as well as check out Starting Point, we would love for you to consider that as you begin this new journey of the most important decision that will change your life. Thank you so much and God bless you as we make choices in this moment towards a different future.